How's it going guys? Dave and Tyler here from European Auto Solutions in Hudson, New Hampshire. We have a dealership specializing in European vehicles. We also have sales and state inspections. We have uh, Mike's E46 in here for an inspection and we're going to be going through some common issues with the vehicle. And stay tuned. So one of the main common things on these E46s are these control arm bushings. They, have a, they tend to get a lot of play. These ones aren't too bad, but you can see the wheels kind of moving a little bit when I'm putting a little pressure on it. They'll actually tear and start to knock and make a bunch of noise. Another pretty common thing on these cars are the motor mounts. You can see right here that it's starting to dry rot and crack and kind of rot apart. Those aren't a huge deal right now. Um, eventually you'll start to feel a little motion when you're uh, giving it gas. You got another bushing here, same thing. Just see it moving. Another really common thing, you kind of see them from down here, are the oil filter housing gaskets. This one's starting to leak a little bit. You'll actually see a bunch of oil coming down out of this area. You'll see it kind of better up top. Another thing are these rear diff bushings. These ones are really easily overlooked. But if you look right over here, you see the stress cracking. When you're really heavy on the power, you'll feel the back end kind of moving around. Another common thing are these seals. The output shaft seals tend to leak. These ones are good on this car. Another common thing are the rear springs. These ones happen all the time. You actually just stick your hand up here, feel the bottom of it, and it's usually the bottom coils tend to pop off, and then you can just feel them, they'll be rattling around. This car is good for now, but on this spring, you can actually feel the paint coming off it like that and that makes the springs actually rust and that's what causes them to fail. Another common thing is obviously rear shocks. You'll see them start to leak. These ones are good for now. And then you have the rear trailing arm bushings. Oh, there's one right here. Take a little pry bar. See all the movement there? This is actually pretty good for one of these cars, but it is definitely starting to move. And then brake hoses. That's pretty common on any car. This, these ones are good. You just kind of push them around, look for cracks around the edges here. And then you can actually, while you're down here, check the brake line, which runs all the way up and across. But it all looks good on this car. Another super common thing is the Gibo. This little flex shaft. You'll see them cracking, but this one's pretty good. And the center bearing on the differential, or the drive shaft. You can't really see it because you have all these heat shields and stuff. But if you take your arm and push up and down on the drive shaft, you'll actually feel it. This one's good, but... Yeah, usually when um, you're on the gas, you'll hear them go... Like a thump, thump, thump. It'll, you'll hear it kind of on the tunnel of the transmission there. Another common one would be the uh, clutch sleeve hose. This one's good, but just like the brake hoses, they like to crack and eventually pop. Another common thing that you'll find, these power steering pulleys like to break off. The shaft and the, the uh, pump will actually break. It's pretty common. Um, the belts, they like to crack. This one's starting to a little bit. Just kind of twist it, push on it, and you'll see the cracks. The uh, tensioners here, these like to go. Put a little pressure on it like that. This one looks pretty good. And then, obviously, the dreaded water pump right up here. Luckily, the owner says this one's been replaced. But if you go from on top of the car, you can actually pull on it. And just try to feel for any play in there. Sometimes the shaft will break, sometimes the impeller will break, and sometimes there's a little gasket that'll leak. Another common thing are the expansion tanks here. This one's good for now. They like to crack on the sides and on the seams. Uh, you can't really do much about that. They just kind of go when they decide to. And on here we have a little shift shaft. 
see a leakage. If you see right here, we have the oil coming up out of that area. Those are all pretty common things on these cars. Um, we also have the exhaust gaskets right here off the manifolds. They like to crust up and there's years of heat and water and just junk. You can actually uh, heat these up with a torch, hammer them out, put a new gasket in, new bolts, and usually it's good for a while. Otherwise, you have to get new flanges and it turns into a whole thing. So on top of the engines, other common things on these cars, the valve covers and the gaskets. You'll usually see a bunch of oil pooling on these little, these little ledges before the exhaust manifolds. This one looks like it's been done recently, so there's nothing going on there. We also see a lot of thermostat failures. Um, usually they jam open or the gaskets here leak, or sometimes you'll see a crack and it'll just leak all the coolant out. Um, Vanos lines, if you see on here, there's actually a hose that goes to the Vanos unit from the oil filter housing gasket. These like to leak right on here. Sometimes the crush washers here leak, and there's two more down there, two more crush washers. They actually come all the way down to the back side of there, which is also a common leak. The, uh, we mentioned it down below, the oil filter housing gasket. Might be hard to see on camera, but if you shine a flashlight down onto the block, you can actually see a little bit of oil, and you can see that the, this hose is actually leaking down there as well. Another common thing is these intake boots. These like to tear and give you all sorts of lean codes and mix, mixture faults. If you put your hand down here and pinch, there's a little boot. Usually you can feel a little tear in there. There's also another common spot on the elbow around here. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but you'll usually feel a little spot. Another thing are the DESA flaps. A lot of times you'll hear like a rattling noise when you're giving the engine power. It's trying to adjust the air mixture and these will actually fail. Um, this one's good on this car. These vacuum hoses also tend to break off or get brittle. These little rubber fittings. This one's actually kind of starting to do it now. If you just kind of play with it a little bit, you can see little pieces of rubber coming off. Super common thing that causes all sorts of mixture faults as well. Um, Radiator hoses up here. These ones look pretty new. Sometimes you see them pop off. Um, I know a lot of people talk about Vanos issues on these cars. In reality, you don't see that many problems. Um, usually you'll get a check engine light first and then it'll start to run badly. There's not really much you can do to actually check them externally. Um, it's one of those things you gotta start taking apart. So part of diagnosing the Vanos is uh, you can actually swap out the Vanos units. They're interchangeable from side to side. So you take one out, move it to the other side. You can actually see if one of these are bad, the fault will actually follow. If it doesn't follow to the other one, then it's actually an internal problem. And uh, you're taking the valve cover off, you're getting the timing tools out, it turns into a pretty big job. And on the secondary air things, secondary air valve here, these hoses tend to break. It's kind of starting when I you see when I move it. You get little pieces of rubber kind of flaking off. That that's good for another couple of weeks, but that will fail and cause another mixture fault. Definitely, when you're trying to diagnose these cars, you want a smoke tester, and you can actually hook it up to. Here's a good spot. You put it in here, and you'll see where the smoke's coming out. That's where air is getting in. Common things on the inside of these cars. Um, this car's got none of those problems, so it's kind of redundant. But you see the pixels on the dashboard, on the radio, the climate control, the cluster. These pixels will die out and it'll just look like splotches of color. Um, it's kind of annoying, but it's not really a functionality issue. You'll see sometimes these uh, blower motors, the regulator will get stuck and the fan will either be on full or it'll never turn on. This car's totally fine. The uh, leather on the steering wheel, sometimes up here, it'll tear, start to fatigue. 
you'll see the paint or the plastic start to wear and fatigue. You'll see like little pieces peeling or, you know, like the buttons, they'll start to smudge or wear out. Um, on the headliners, these like to peel off a lot. This car is totally good, but you'll see it peel off here. And then on this little strip where there's screws for the airbag, these all like to peel off. Sometimes, especially on cars that are in the sun a lot, the dashboard might crack or this little airbag fitting will actually kind of balloon out and it won't fit nice and smooth. Um, the armrest, the leather on these likes to kind of crack and just look kind of bad. You see kind of on the, the cup holder, the little plastic coating they put on it starting to peel off a little bit. That's kind of what it'll look like on the steering wheel as well and sometimes on these buttons. Um, on the back of the car, if you look towards the back, the uh, headliners like to sag. It's like, yeah, it is starting to do it a little bit over here. Not too bad yet. And the whole thing will actually sag down. And if you have the windows open, it'll flap around in the wind. It's not a functionality problem, but it does get a little annoying. These little slides like to break sometimes too, and then it'll like get stuck like that or jam on the moonroof. Not a huge deal. You can. If you really want, you can just pull it out. Um, the seats, especially on the driver's seat, because that's where everyone drives the car and gets the most use. These bolsters will crack or even tear. Um, definitely recommend just using good leather conditioner. It kind of helps keep the leather in good shape and it kind of helps it uh, take the stress of daily use. And shift boots, this one's good. Sometimes they'll actually tighten up in the sun and pop out like that um, yeah that's pretty much it on the inside so one thing that's kind of common on these you'll really see it on cars that are driven hard it was more common on the uh, e36s if you pull all this covers back it's kind of a takes a couple minutes it's not that bad but the actual mounts will fail for the, sh the shocks and if it's really really bad the metal will actually fatigue and start to mushroom up worst case scenario it'll actually uh, the shocks will punch through. It's kind of rare that you really only see it on cars that uh, people really beat on and drive hard, but it is it is a thing and it can get pretty expensive, so it's just something to think about if you're looking to buy one of these cars. So another common thing is these drains will actually plug up, and it's pretty common on the sunroof and stuff. You'll actually get water down here in the trunk and all this can rot out. This car looks like it's totally fine, but you do see it, and it's kind of a big repair. It's also pretty common if you take the battery tray off, it'll happen in the battery tray, and on this side as well. Um, you're basically looking for standing water or any rust that water could have been there for. And yeah, that's kind of it for the back. So another common thing on the exterior on these cars is rust. Um, almost every car, especially up here in the northeast, gets it on the fender liners. Usually right here you'll get a nice little patch. It starts out looking like little bubbles and then eventually this whole panel will rot out. It is somewhat common that down here on the rocker panels that you'll actually see little bits of rust forming. This car is nice. Um, if you're really concerned about it, you can actually peel this cover back a little bit with like a plastic uh, interior removal tool. And you can actually see if it's starting to rust on the seams on the body. Those are the two really common spots for rust. Um, overall, these cars actually don't rust that bad. Um, subframes, sometimes those will rust by the bushings or the bolts. Not super common unless the car is driven in the salt and snow a lot, but any car will rust at that point. So we're finishing up here with Mike's car. Um, I'd recommend for him to start with doing the oil filter housing gasket, the Danos line, maybe start thinking about doing these vacuum lines. The uh, control arm bushings or just replace the control arms. A lot of times it works out to the same price. Um, maybe think about doing that rear diff bushing as well. Um, apart from that, he's good to go. Uh, definitely check us out on Facebook or uh, our website, eastcoasthero.net. We're happy to help you with any questions you might have. Feel free to give us a call.